Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Snyder, and I'm the president of the Association for the Advancement of Wound Care. I'm a board certified wound specialist, and I'm also a diplomat of the American Board of Podiatric Surgery. Certainly there are many different types of debridement, so we're going to be having uh, some very good discussion around debridement. Debridement as the tenant and uh, one of the major precepts of wound management. Uh, what it does in essence is it cleans the wound, it allows us to create uh, a different paradigm so that the senescent cells, those very cells that are kind of sluggish in the wound, uh, begin to move and to become active and to proliferate. Debridement itself stimulates and jump starts the body to be able to produce growth factors that will create chemotaxis and proliferations. So you start getting those cells that are very important and very necessary for wound healing to be attracted to that ulceration. And that is one of the precepts of how these wounds very often begin to re-epithelialize. We also have the opportunity to remove the hyperproliferative wound edge from the chronic wound so that keratinocytes in the epidermis can move across the wound. Make certain before you're doing particularly an aggressive debridement or an excisional debridement that you make absolutely certain that that wound uh, is an appropriate candidate. Many times there are ulcerations that we can debride in an office setting, however, uh, there is a threshold uh, that we have to understand and in some cases we have to bring those patients to the operating room. If this is something that you're not comfortable doing or that is not within your purview, then certainly one of the beautiful things about a multidisciplinary approach is that you have colleagues to lean on. You have those individuals who can take that patient in the operating room, do the appropriate debridement, and then send the patient back uh, to your care for follow-up. First and foremost, we have to make absolutely certain the patient has adequate vascularity. If you have ischemia, you always have hypoxia, which means lack of oxygen to the wound site. However, the converse is not true. You may not have a true blockage or critical stenosis in a large vessel, but you can still have hypoxia to the wound, individuals who smoke inappropriate offloading, COPD, cardiomyopathy, etc., etc. So there are many extrinsic factors and intrinsic factors that can cause hypoxia to the wound as well. And for this reason, it's critically important that we not only evaluate the macrovascular disease, but the microvascular disease as well. So one other thing to keep in mind is, although you want to do an aggressive debridement, uh, you don't want to expose what we like to call named structure. So as an example, if the, if the wound really is a full thickness wound, and it goes to uh, the dermis, as an example, and you do too an extensive debridement, what may happen is you may suddenly see a bone or a tendon that you did not expect to see. At that point, stop debriding. When you do use advanced therapy, the wound has to be meticulously prepared. If it's not, then that therapy will not be successful. Peter Sheehan and colleagues looked at that four-week paradigm and found that in individuals where 50% of the wound does not resurface within the first four weeks, it's very unlikely that a wound will heal by week 12. And in fact, there was only a 9% chance that it would heal by week 12. So there is a sense of urgency, there is a sense of importance. Uh, Larry Lavery and colleagues did some very interesting work looking at uh, wound closure and found that the longer a wound stays open, the more likely it will become infected. And certainly that can transition to a much worse outcome. So it's critically important to have this sense of urgency uh, and to do um, evaluations on a regular basis and to make certain that when standard care is not working, you now have a threshold of that four-week paradigm to be able to understand when it is that you should be using advanced therapies. Doing debridement on a regular basis is also critically important. Having the right instruments, having the right light in the room, having an assistant, and having the comfort level to be able to be certain that this debridement that you are about to accomplish is something that certainly is within your purview and within your comfort level. Thank you very much for your time, and um, I hope you've enjoyed this video.